this is Jim. Today's video is going to be a walkthrough of my vintage three ply Ludwig drum set. After the last video that I did on 20 inch bass drum sounds, I got some feedback, some people asking about other gear that I use. Um, and so today we're going to just walk through this drum set. There's going to be a detailed discussion about tom mounting and other considerations for a player's drum set. And also there'll be some history of this particular drum set. All right, so let's do a quick overview of the drum set. So the bass drum and the floor tom are made in 1960, and they came with the original drum set that I bought used when I was a kid. Here's the earliest picture I have of the drum set from shortly after I bought it. You can see that it has the single headed toms and you can also see the weight that's holding the bass drum in place. The 13 inch tom is a relatively newer tom. It was made in 1970. You can see the pointy blue olive badge. And the snare drum is a much newer, I believe it's a 2017, six and a half by 14 inch Ludwig Black Beauty with two blugs. So looking at the bass drum from the back, you can see that it has the transition badge and it's a three-ply drum with mahogany, poplar, mahogany shell composition. You can also see that there is a mount um, that was added later after it was built in the factory. Here's a front view of that mount that was added later. Um, and you can see that it was put on, it wasn't quite straight. Uh, but this is the way that I received it when I was a kid. Uh, one thing I'll mention is the screw in the mount has been replaced um, my father taught me how to tap threads out, um, because the original was stripped out. So that when I was in the fifth grade, my dad taught me how to tap on that piece right there. Looking back at the bass drum, you can see on the resonant head, I've got a four inch hole in it at about three o'clock. And that allows the mic to go inside you know, a straight shot with the common stand that people have, and you, you can get the mic inside and have it be punchy. The other thing is, and this is my own, you could say it's a sin or improvement. When I was about 15 years old, I added some pearl spurs to the drum to make it, you know, a lot more stable so it wasn't sliding all over the place. And here's another important detail. You can see that I've opted for rim style mounts. These are Ludwig Viber bands. When I rewrapped the drum set, I did not drill out the original mounting holes. I left those covered and went for these Ludwig Viber bands. And yes, that gives you a ton of sustain and tuning range. And I do use moon gels uh, to calm that down afterwards to get rid of some overtones and too much sustain. I'll show later in the video, I'll do a little demonstration of what direct shell mounting does to the sustain and, and tone of the drum. So here's the floor tom. It's also mahogany, poplar mahogany. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a Slingerland Radio King hoop on there that came with it. This badge I added to the drum when I rewrapped it for the second time. I sadly messed up the original badge, and that's something I feel really bad about when I did the original rewrap, and I'll talk more about that later in the video. You can see also that the drum has these Gretsch floor tom mounts, and, and those were already on the drum when I acquired the drum when I was a kid. I've added some rubber gaskets there, I just bought some rubber stock online and cut out those gaskets, but it's kind of interesting. It's a Slingerland floor tom that came with other Ludwig drums and it's got Gretsch mounts on it. Another important detail on the floor tom is you can see that I'm using these pearl rubber feet 
and those help a lot with the sustain on the floor tom. In addition to having the 13 inch tom for this drum set, I also have a 12 inch Ludwig three ply tom that goes along with it. So we're gonna have a segment now to see what it sounds like with this drum added. In this portion of the video, I'm going to go through some of the history of the drum set and more details of the rewrapping process and things like that. So again, here's the earliest picture that I have of the drum set. Um, in the beginning, I didn't have the roto toms. Uh, those were added at some point later, but this is the earliest picture I have of it. What you see next is Eventually, I added a second 20-inch bass drum, and that's the same bass drum that um, you see in the 20-inch bass drum sounds video. This last picture shows me sitting at the drums sometime after I had recovered them for the first time. And at the time I was playing these, when I was in high school, having the single-headed toms was no longer popular, but in a minute you'll hear a recording that was made around this time, and I think that, you know, single-headed toms can sound good, and I was actually glad that I had these single-headed toms because it takes a little bit more effort to get some sound out of them, and I think it made me a little bit better of a drummer because I had to work to get a little bit more sound out of the toms. Here's a picture of the drums right before I rewrap them for the second time. Looking at the original 13 inch tom, you can see that I eventually did do a project to put on bottom lugs. This next photo is from the time when I was seeking out 12, 13, and 14 inch orphan toms for the rewrap project. This took several months. I opted not to rewrap the original 12 and 13 inch toms because the shells weren't in good shape. They were basically held together with the previous owner's wood filler and paint. This photo shows the newer 12 and 13 inch mahogany poplar maple tom shells, which were great except for the fact that the 12 inch tom I bought online had a major edge defect. Whomever was doing edges in the Ludwig factory the day it was made did not cut the shell all the way around, leaving a bump in the edge. As a result, I sent both toms out to Precision Drum Company to correct the edges. Here's a picture of the 12-inch tom after the edges were corrected. This photo shows the disassembly of the bass drum showing how much the original wrap had yellowed over the years. Here's the bare bass drum shell. The red oval shows what I believe is a factory original four-hole pattern for a rail consulate mount. Here's the glued bass drum wrap on the bench fixture just before application. And here's the newly wrapped shell. After a few months of work, here are all the rewrapped drums together. Hello again. In this portion of the video, 
I'm going to go through a brief tom mounting experiment that will compare using a rim style mounting system versus direct to shell mounting. And I'm going to use one of the toms that I originally got with the drum set uh, to demonstrate that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test this. I have the uh, Sennheiser mic on it. This is the, the new Maple Tom. So this is the original Tom, and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did before. So now I'm going to compare both toms when they're mounted. So, what is the takeaway from the Tom mounting experiment? The direct to shell mounting interferes with the natural resonance of the drum. That's the bottom line. Um, of course, we could have done a more scientific experiment. We could have tried several tunings from low to high and seen which one works the best. But the bottom line is, if you use an isolation mounting system like RIMS or other ones that are out there, the mounting system does not interfere with the natural resonance of the drum. And that's why I use that type of a mounting system. If you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. The three-ply Ludwig drums that we reviewed in the video are my go-to drum set for rock. They're currently packed up upstairs uh, because they just came home from a gig, and I gig with those a lot. They're the most used drum set that I have. I guess if there's one thing to take away from this video, it's make the best of whatever drums you have. The drums we reviewed in the video have been with me since I was in the fifth grade for many, many years, and they've been good to me all along, and I just try and do the best with them and make them sound the best. Um, as long as I've had them. So, you know, it doesn't always matter. You don't always need the, the newest kit or whatever, the best thing. Make the best of what you have. So that's the, that's the video. And we're going to go out um, on the clip that we came in on. And thank you very, very much for watching. Have a great day.